And our message today is entitled, On Vigil with the Holy Spirit. Friends, if you are keeping vigil with someone, and if you are on a pilgrimage with someone, well, you need to know what that person is, to keep company with them and to walk with them. So, if you're on a vigil with, and if you're on a pilgrimage with the Holy Spirit, then who is the Holy Spirit? And how are you going to recognise this person as you're walking along? One good question would be, can you tell the story of the Holy Spirit? And if you can't, then ask the Holy Spirit to tell you his story. How would you recognise this person? Well, if you're preparing for a vigil, there's a few things you need to do, and that is just to get ready. Just if you're going for a walk or a holiday or anything, you decide what do I need and what don't I need to take. Uh, Travel as light as you can. But if you're going on pilgrimage with the Holy Spirit, then... Ask the Father to tell you how he sent Jesus on pilgrimage and a good place to start is in Philippians 2, 7 where he says, Empty yourself and die to yourself, which Jesus reveals in his own baptism. There's a poem uh, in Finland, but one of the verses goes, In death you can no longer see yourself and so you can now see God. In dying to ourselves... Our eyes are open that we can now see God more clearly. We can now see God, the Holy Spirit, more clearly. The next thing that we would do on a spiritual pilgrimage is be reconciled. Repent. Make a straight path in our heart and our soul and our spirit for this spiritual pilgrimage. Then clean up the house because someone special is coming. As God has told us, a humble, contrite heart, God will not spurn. Or as Jesus suggested in uh, Matthew, put on the wedding garment of repentance. We might follow Jesus' advice and receive the Holy Spirit. Friends, life in the Holy Spirit is not an optional extra nor is it discretionary. It's not something that we get to choose, yes, I will, no, I won't. It's the core aspect of living in the kingdom of God and living the Christian life, or at least that's Jesus' opinion. You won't be able to get into the kingdom without the Holy Spirit. And Jesus' recommended way of doing that was being baptised in the Holy Spirit. Friends, this is not an optional extra. It's not something discretionary uh, for Pentecostals and Charismatics. Without it, as far as Jesus taught, you can't get into the kingdom of God. And we'll perhaps discuss this more in weeks to come. And then receive the Holy Spirit. Empty yourself of all other ways and energies and life and just say, Lord God, here I am, here I am. And let yourself be blessed, as Jesus said, pressed down, shaken together, and running out all over. Lord, may I be running out all over in the life of the Holy Spirit. Are you able to hear this very well over the... uh, Yep, you can. Bless the Lord for the rain. If we're on pilgrimage with the Holy Spirit, it would help to have a bit of an idea of what the Holy Spirit's main goal is, what he's really up to. We'll let people close the doors and a few things. Actually, while the rain is going on, let's just take a moment of quiet and let that image of the rain of God 
and the Holy Spirit being rained down on us in absolute abundance in a torrent soak into us. Lord, we receive your soaking. We receive your life-giving rain, the rain of grace, the rain of piety and purity and fear of the Lord, of righteousness, of goodness, faithful loving kindness. We receive your cleansing waters, washing us clean, purifying us. We receive your abundant of life, Lord. Come, Lord. Lord, give me the gift to receive all that you want to give. that I might then give to others. Thank you, Lord. So the Holy Spirit was sent that we might live the Christian life. So what is the goal of the Christian life? Well, one writer put it this way, Christian life is the reproduction of Jesus in souls. That's the goal of the Christian life. And perfection, the most faithful and perfect reproduction, consists of the transformation of souls into Jesus. Paul said, do you not know your souls that Christ Jesus is in you? And then again, for all who have been baptized into Christ, you have put on Christ and again of Christ dwelling through you, through faith in your hearts. 
Again, those whom he has foreknown, he has also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son. As for perfection, it is now no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. Again, Paul says, But we all, with faces unveiled, reflecting as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into his very image from glory to glory. Peter just cuts the chase with a couple of words and says to be partakers of the divine nature. I have come that you may have life and have it to the full. And that is the life of God, this eternity life. And to enable us to do that, we're given the gift of the Holy Spirit. This is the one with whom we are on a pilgrimage. And so a number of spiritual writers have said, therefore the goal of the Christian life is the Holy Spirit. To possess the Holy Spirit and to be possessed by the Holy Spirit. And then, as we will hear, as the Holy Spirit sanctifies and transforms us into Christ, we're transformed into the body of Christ, the church, the triune God's community on earth the passion, the mission, the ministry, the work, the zeal, the sole focus of the Holy Spirit is that you and I would be born again into Christ. That's his focus. That's his passion. That's his ministry. So the one with whom we are keeping vigil and are on pilgrimage with, his sole desire is that you would be transformed into Christ. And so in a way, the Holy Spirit is poured out in full upon us and he wants to decrease so that Christ might increase in us and so that through all the work and ministry of the Holy Spirit, he doesn't care that they don't see him. What he wants is that people will see the Christ. And the Christ is so passionately in love with the Father, he just wants to decrease (laughs) so that when people see him, they see the Father. Have I been with you all this time and you still don't know me? To see me is to see the Father. All I want is that people would know the Father. And the Father, (laughs) in a sense, decrease, I just want you to see my son. I just want you to see my son. Here's this life of giving and self-sacrifice that each of them are doing out of love for the other. So if we're on mission, if we're on pilgrimage with the Holy Spirit, you will know that we're doing it successfully the more we become like Christ. The Israelites knew where they were going, the promised land, but they didn't yet know who God was making them into as the children and the people of God and who God is. But thanks be to God, through Jesus Christ, we do. We know what God is like by looking at Jesus. We know what God is making us into by looking at Jesus the Christ, the Son of God, the Son of Man. The Israelites went by way of the Sinai Desert and a holy mountain. We go by the way of Christ through baptism and the Holy Spirit. So what happens when the Holy Spirit comes, this person with whom we are on pilgrimage? We're born again in Christ into the kingdom and we are equipped and empowered to be people, people who've been crowned and wear the crowns of God who are able to allow ourselves to be healed and restored so that we can be part of Christ's ministry of restoration and reconciliation and salvation for others. And we're created into the body of Christ. How does this happen? The way it's always happened. In the beginning there was darkness and chaos and the Spirit breathed over the darkness and chaos. In the fullness of time when there was darkness and chaos and we wondered who will save us, the Holy Spirit was there and hovered over Mary and the Son of Man, the Son of God, was born again on earth. And when Jesus began his ministry, there was the Holy Spirit again hovering and empowering Jesus of Nazareth into all of his ministry. 
And then after he's died, who's there again? The Holy Spirit coming down upon us in tongues of fire that we might be born again into Christ and to be the church. So how would you recognise the Holy Spirit? I've got a pretty good idea if Cole was outside and he started speaking that I would recognise him because I've got to know his, the sound of his voice. So how do you know the Holy Spirit? Well, just spend time with him and get to know how he speaks. What are the, some of the things that he says? How does he say them and what does he say? Spend time with him and get to know this person so that when the Holy Spirit shows up and says, let's go this way, you can think, yep, I recognise that voice. I know that's the Holy Spirit by the sound of his voice, by the things that he says and the things that he doesn't say. If he was to say, let's go this way and we'll rip off coal and make a bit of a profit on the way, you could say, no, that's not the way the Holy Spirit works. <laughs> but if he says, let's go by a way of grace and forgiveness, you think... That sounds like him. <laughs> so you ask the Holy Spirit, you get to know him, you spend time with the Holy just sit there. And don't keep talking at him all the time. As Harry Seacombe does this thing where he hears the phone ringing, he picks up the phone and goes, hello, who is this? Who's speaking, please? Hello, who's speaking? Hello, who's speaking? Hello, hello, who's speaking? Finally, when he draws Beth, the voice at the other end says, <laughs> why, it's you speaking. And he says, oh, I thought I recognised the voice and hangs up the phone. Friends, so we spend, sometimes we spend so much time talking to God that really we're just hearing our own voice and we're communing with our own thoughts, our own feelings, our own desires and sometimes our own fears and our own wants. How about we give him a chance to get a word in edgewise? <laughs> And just hear how he speaks. Ask the Holy Spirit, what are you like? And what are the things that you like? What do you like, Lord God, Holy Spirit? And then go about living that way and doing those things that like him. You know, I've got to know and like Albert and Rose. So if I'm going to be friends with them, I'm going to do the things that they like. And I'm going to try not to do the things that they don't like and not to do the things that annoy them or mean that we're living in different ways. Get to know what the Holy Spirit likes and do it. So listen to, look to, what does the Holy Spirit look like when the Holy Spirit shows up? What is the Holy Spirit passionate about? If we're on pilgrimage with this person and we're keeping vigil with the Holy Spirit, then let's find out, Lord God, Holy Spirit, what are you passionate about? What really makes you on fire that you long for, that you delight in? What makes you happy? What makes you joyful? Lord God, Holy Spirit, what are things that make you sad and disappointed? And avoid them. How else might you get to recognise the Holy Spirit or talk to others who you think he knows? Talk to Jen, she knows. Talk to Laurie, she knows. Des, talk to Des, he's been around a long time. Talk to Jeff and Lorraine. Talk to people who've been on the journey with him. That you think their heart's in the right place. They've learnt to listen to the Holy Spirit and, and obey. Read about the Holy Spirit. Good place to start is the scriptures, especially those things that Jesus said about the Holy Spirit. In books of theology and the uh, writers on the spiritual life. Here's one that's just non-negotiable. If you don't do this, you're in real strife as far as getting to know the Holy Spirit. You've got to remain in the body of Christ. You've got to remain in the communion of the saints and you've got to be in a local church. You've got to be part of the local community. If you're out there as a lone ranger doing your own thing, then that's probably all that you're going to be doing is your own thing. And if you're going to ask some people what the Holy Spirit's like, here's two people that 
I have it on good authority and from personal experience, really know what the Holy Spirit's like. Ask God the Father. <laughs> he thought the Holy Spirit was so wonderful that he entrusted his son into the life of the Holy Spirit. So say, Father, tell me about the Holy Spirit. Teach me. Show me. And another person asked Jesus, Son of God, Son of Man. And he could have thought, well, I can do all this on my own. And he could have. But he thought, why would I bother doing all this work on my own when the Holy Spirit's there? <laughs> I'll be baptised in the Holy Spirit. I'll allow myself to live and work and minister out of the power and the life and the gifts and the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. And yes, I said I'd hang around with the disciples after I died. But, hey, the Holy Spirit was so great in my life, I'll just give them the Holy Spirit. <laughs> so there's two very reliable people that you could talk to to say, what's the Holy Spirit like? Go to the Father and go to Jesus. <clears throat> How will you recognise if you're doing a half-decent job uh, keeping vigil with the Holy Spirit and on pilgrimage with the Holy Spirit? It'll rain down grace. <laughs> Sorry for the pun. The fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit will be evident in your life. Now, you might not notice it so much, but others will. And they'll want to hang around you because they want to taste and see the goodness of the Lord in you because of the fruit of the Holy Spirit that they see in you. And we might have another rain break. Whereas with the God the Father and the Son, we've got a bit of an idea of what they're like because we have these images of Father, we have these images of Son, and we have the image that we have in the very life of Jesus. We don't have those same images of the Holy Spirit. We've got things like breath, fire, wind, living water, but we don't actually have an image that one Russian Orthodox theologian, a guy called Losky, said actually the image of the Holy Spirit that we can see is the body of Christ. When it's living as fully and as faithfully as it can live the life of Christ. So how might you walk on this pilgrimage... Well, we've heard that term, um, the release of the Spirit. There are actually four ways that we could think of the release of the Spirit. The first one and the obvious one that comes to mind is the release of the person of God, the Holy Spirit, through baptism in the Holy Spirit into our lives and by living out all of the spiritual disciplines. So that's the release of the person of God, the Holy Spirit, into our life. And I just give the Holy Spirit full and complete authority and permission in my life 
and try and open up every door and window in my life and every space in my life. The second way we can think of the release of the Holy Spirit, and this is the tough one, and I'm still working on this one, and when I pull it off and I'm successful at it, I'll, I'll tell you how I did it. And this is the one of being released from the spirit of the flesh and fallen humanity, of letting go of those things that Paul says, that, that sin and those faults that so easily entangle me that Paul said, look, I kept praying all the time to be freed from this thought in the flesh. And the Lord said, when I'm good and ready, I'll do it. Or as he says, it's in Romans 7, I keep wanting and praying to do the right thing and I get it wrong. <laughs> he will free me from this life of flesh. So the second one is we keep doing this work to be freed from uh, the flesh and this fallen humanity. We can't pull it off. Only God can do that. Our task is continually to say to God, have mercy on me, Lord. Have mercy. I still seem to be tangled in the ways of the flesh. And to be honest, Lord, there's some ways of the flesh that I still get a bit of pleasure out of. Free me, please. The third one is the spirit of this world. And we're seeing what the spirit of this world, the principalities and powers in this world are doing in wars and conflicts and how people are being oppressed and pushed down. And in some cases, we are on spiritual warfare, brothers and sisters, to being freed from and released from the power of evil spirits in our life. And if that means being prayed for, being freed of any of the demons and what have you in our lives or in the lives of others, that's what we do. So there are four ways in which we seek to be released from the Spirit, uh, have that release of the Spirit. So what must we do to walk this vigil? Listen. Slow down and be still and present with the Holy Spirit. Jesus, after all, did say, wait. <laughs> wait here in the city until the Holy Spirit comes. So when Jesus says to you, wait, just wait, <laughs> but with that expectation that he'll come. Joe reminded us this morning of pray always. Now the verse doesn't say to say prayers always, but to pray, be in a state of prayer and prayerfulness, attention and attentiveness to God and openness to God. Here's another one that I'm still working on. Allow yourself to be pruned, refined, purified. One of the good and not so good things about the person of God, the Holy Spirit, we're told he is fire. <laughs> Allow ourselves to be purified in the fire of the Holy Spirit. And what might that fire be like? Love, life, goodness righteousness, fear of the Lord, mercy, gentleness, kindness, tenderness, and yes, truth. <laughs> God's truth. What happens when you purify gold and you burn it all up? Is the gold destroyed? No, only the rubbish. So you are not going to be destroyed in God's holy fire. Only the rubbish and the impurities in your life and what's left is going to be gold. The stuff you make crowns out of, as I understand. And if you're having difficulties, ask a friend. Friends, if we invite God the Holy Spirit into our life and to be a temple, then we have to learn to do it without conditions. Um, Jesus said, don't go after signs and wonders. <laughs> Just let the Holy Spirit come on the Holy Spirit's terms. Lord, I'm not doing this so I can get all these gifts. As much as the gift of prophecy and tongues and healing and miracles, Lord, I just want you out of love for you. And I don't need all the experiences. The only thing that I'd like, Lord, is just 
that little bit of assurance that I'm on the right track and I'm trying to love you with all my heart and soul and mind and strength. And it's a good idea, if you're going to let the Holy Spirit into your life, not to say, well, you can have that room. <laughs> that can be your room, Holy Spirit. Um, but this is my room, and now uh, would you please not go into there, and look, I want to keep that door. If you're going to let the Holy Spirit into the house of your life, give him all the keys. Open all the doors, and let the Holy Spirit have free reign. And it's usually not a good idea from my experience to say, Lord, please don't make me an evangelist out on the streets, or, or please don't give me the gift of tongues, Lord, look, anything but that. If the Holy Spirit wants to give you a gift, it's going to be good for you. And it's going to be good for others. So they would be some of my suggestions on how living this life in the Holy Spirit. And one thing that we don't have time for today, but just go through and listen to some of the names of the Holy Spirit that you find in Scripture. And what I might do is just send these out to you. But we're, called, we're told is Spirit of the Living God. Spirit of the Son, Spirit of Fire, Spirit of Truth, Spirit of Grace, Breath of the Almighty, Spirit of Holiness, Spirit of Glory. And you can listen to some of the things that Jesus says the Holy Spirit gets up to. There's power. He is the paraclete, our advocate. He's a sanctifier. He's a counsellor. He's one who reminds me of the ways of Jesus, of what Jesus said. He's the spirit of truth. He's the one who teaches. And if you're afraid of going out on witness, witnessing for, for God, well, it's the Holy Spirit who does the witnessing. We don't have to do it. All we have to do is say, Lord God, Holy Spirit, what are you up to and what can I do to cooperate? Or in my case, Lord God, Holy Spirit, what should I do to keep out of your way so that you can really get on with the work? We're told this Holy Spirit, the work he does is communion, community, union, unity. How will people know that we here in Peace Christian Community are sons and daughters of God? By how we love one another and how much we are in unity. And we might finish with this. We're told that God is love. You know where all the verses for that are in John's epistle, John's first epistle. We know that the Holy Spirit is God. So when we read these words out of 1 Corinthians 13, we can take the word love out and we can just as easily put in the word Holy Spirit to give us an idea of who this person is, how we would keep vigil with them and how they are on pilgrimage you know how it starts off the whole love is always patient let's hear it in the words of the holy spirit who is love the holy spirit is always patient the holy spirit is always kind holy spirit is never jealous and the holy spirit is never boastful the holy spirit is not conceited and the holy spirit is never rude the Holy Spirit doesn't seek his own advantage. The Holy Spirit does not take offence and the Holy Spirit does not store up grievances. The Holy Spirit does not rejoice in wrongdoing but the Holy Spirit finds joy in the truth. The Holy Spirit is always ready to make allowances. The Holy Spirit is always ready to trust. Just Stop on that. The Holy Spirit is always ready to trust you. The Holy Spirit is always ready to trust me. The Holy Spirit is always ready to hope. The Holy Spirit is always ready to hope in you. The Holy Spirit is always ready to endure whatever comes. The Holy Spirit is always ready to endure whatever comes in our life. 
when I get things wrong, when I fall short, when I muck things up, when I don't pull it off, the Holy Spirit is always ready to stay with me. And the Holy Spirit never comes to an end. The love who is the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit who is love never comes to an end. This one who says, I delight in you so much that I consider you a temple and I will live in you as a temple. Why? Because I really want you to look like Jesus, to wear his crown, to be freed from the term and have eternity life, that life which is the Father. Friends, this is the one with whom we are keeping vigil up to Pentecost. This is the one with whom we are on pilgrimage. And this is the one that God the Father and God the Son want to pour out and are pouring out into us in full measure, pressed down, shaken together, running out all over, so that we can, as Peter says, be partakers of the divine nature and being transformed into Christ, whose image we reflect. All we can say is, here I am, Lord God, Holy Spirit, come. Do unto me what has been promised. Amen. Let us go, sisters and brothers.